Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We do have breaking news coming out of the Middle East uh, about the S-300 system in Syria. It, the first of the S-300 Syria, uh, th S-300 defense systems in Syria have now gone live. Uh, that is a very serious issue because we know that Israel, that they have said before that would be their red line. Uh, I have a feeling that Israel is going to take advantage of this, though, to use it as a strike not only on taking out the missile defense systems inside of uh, Syria, but also at the same time targeting Iran. Uh, we're going to get into all this here in just a moment, but let's start off first with what we were originally looking at on our live broadcast today. RT News was reporting earlier that the U.S. NATO envoy was claiming uh, that Russia is developing banned weapons and that they will target those in obviously what appears to be a first strike scenario. Uh, the article here, and I actually caught this on RT's uh, live broadcast earlier this morning, K, K. Bailey Hutchinson, uh, U.S. ambassador to the NATO, didn't miss an opportunity to fire a warning shot in the direction of Russia when accusing it of building new nuclear missiles that would allegedly be pointed at Europe. Should such missiles be completed, she said at Tuesday's briefing, at that point we would be looking for the capability to take a uh, Russian missile that could hit any of our countries, uh, basically looking to take it out. <clears throat> uh, she goes on, says Hutchinson then doubled on the threat saying countermeasures by the United States would be, be to take out the missiles that are developed by Russia in violation of the treaty, she added. They are on notice. That's some pretty tough language right there. And you have to understand, though, this is like tit for tat. Uh, the NATO has been building up forces on Russia's border, which is in violation of the treaties that they have signed already. Uh, the United States now building a military base inside of Ukraine and also discussing with Poland, building a military base in Poland as well. Uh, there, the nukes under the alleged... Uh, coup of Turkey were moved from the Turkish Insulik Air Base uh, to Armenia. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe it was Armenia. I have to look at the map again to see exactly where that was at. All these things have been happening that have been clearly in violation of the treaties that Miss Kaylee Hutch uh, Hutchinson is speaking about here. Uh, so if Russia is developing these nuclear capabilities... Uh, which no doubt they are. I'm sure Russia is developing a lot. They've showcased quite a few of their hypersonic type of missile capabilities, nuclear bombs, etc. But if they're going to point them at Europe, that's probably the reason why. If the United States is putting military bases in Europe, contrary to their uh, the agreements they've signed with Russia in the past, it's only really building up the tensions. But after all, as I have watched closely, though, there's a lot of other things going on around the globe that is also reason for major concern. And, of course, this right here on the Arabic news channel here, uh, murasalan.com, which we moved it into the English language here, says Syrian army activates first S-300 battery in Syria. This is Israel's red line. Uh, and, of course, now that red line has been crossed. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said that uh, if the S-300 system was put in Syria, that they would go and take it out. They would attack, uh, to attack the system. Uh, the first battery of the Russian-made S-300 defense missile system has come into service, Russian media reported on Tuesday. According to a local source, the first battery of the anti-aircraft complex S-300 came into service with the Syrian Arab Army, on a news agency tweeted on there, and this is their tweet right here. Uh, you can see that. In fact, if you want to go to our Twitter page, um, you can actually see this. We'll share that tweet with you uh, right on our Twitter page. In fact, our Twitter page here is, of course, uh, let's see, how do we have it listed here? Israeli News Live at Stephen Denoon. That's under my pen name that I write under. But you can actually see that for yourself. It looks like, well, in fact, just 13 minutes ago, I'll, I'll share that here in just a moment, but uh, even RT is now reporting it 14 minutes ago. So yeah, it's breaking news. Here we are live. I don't know how long we've been live, but they're breaking it as we're breaking this information to you as well. RT has broke it. Uh, Amichai Stein has broken this information. I saw 13 minutes ago on his account there. So these are some of your um, uh, really 
uh, news medias there that are pretty pretty quick as well. And uh, of course, we uh, we're already bringing this out ourselves. But Amichai Stein, there we go. Amichai Stein has it as well. Has first officially confirmed the S three hundred defense system is online uh, and in Syria. So again, that's major news. But there's other major news as well. And I think it's worth, before I go into Israel talking about Iran's nuclear capabilities, we have to look that Angela Merkel arrives in Israel tomorrow for a visit focused on economic relations, according to the uh, uh, 24horas.mx news there. Uh, I believe this is a French news uh, site that I discovered this on here. It's saying economic, but I don't believe that that's really the case. You have to understand Merkel has been very uh, vocal for Iran to continue the operations that they did under the agreement that Barack Obama had signed. But at the same time, we know that Germany moved all of its military aircraft from the Insulik Air Base when they staged the false coup uh, with Turkey there. That was only to justify the movement of assets and Germany moved their full air force into Jordan right close to the border of Syria. I've stated all along that this would be a NATO force, as the scripture says in Daniel 11:40. the king of the south pushes with him, see he pushes with the king of the north, in other words putting that pressure on them that let's go out here and take out these countries. Now, I know some people try to say that is not the context of the sentence, but I beg to differ with the people that say that, and I'll show you why. Let me show this. There's, the, there's one key verse here that really show, or key word that shows that, that, that the, uh, the theology of saying that he pushes at him is totally wrong. All right, and I'm going to show you exactly why, uh, because it kind of bugs me that that people actually are still foolish enough to believe the, the modern day translation of this. They're doing it based on their theology. This is why they don't translate the verse properly. They do it based on their theology. Their theology suggests that what's going to happen is that the king of the north is going to overthrow Israel. All right, But when I point out the part here that, uh, that he is pushing with him, Imo Melech HaNagiv, the king of the north is, or the king of the south is pushing with him. It's because when he comes over him, Aliyah Melech Hatzafon, Ber Kevet, excuse me, Bu Ferashim. Okay, he's coming over with the horses, the carrot, the chariots, etc. But he's coming into what? Not the Ha'aras. He's not coming into Israel, but Be'aratzot. He's coming into the lands, plural, showing that it's different countries that are being invaded. And this is why I say they are working together. So they need Angela Merkel on the same page with this issue because not only are they going to take out the uh, air defenses in Syria, the S-300, but they need to take out Iran at the exact same time. It's going to be a shock and awe. And they need Angela Merkel on the same page. That's why... Netanyahu has brought her in uh, and it's not being spoke about much because people don't realize what the real purpose is. Now, Prime Minister Anarut Shiva, Israel National News, has not ins uh, inspect, uh, he's saying the IAEA has not inspected a nuclear site we revealed. <clears throat> and so therefore he is trying to build up a case that in fact Iran does have nuclear weapons but, you know, I hate to say it. I mean, if Iran has nuclear weapons, so does Israel. What's the difference? Uh, I mean, I know that they both talk about wiping each other off of the map. You know, yeah, so I understand Israel has a right to protect itself. Iran should have a right to protect itself. Syria should have a right to protect itself. But it's interesting how that world players only see this as a one-sided issue. Only the United States should have the right to protect themselves, and only Israel should have a right to protect themselves. Ah, you know, we really need the coming of the Mashiach. We need the Messiah to come because I can tell you guys, man messes up everything. And um, my only concern is, is when Prime Minister Netanyahu says that people have uh, nuclear weapons, mass destruction, uh, uh, all these false allegations that are normally put out there. I only say false because every time in the past, it's always been false. 
Uh, so what happened over in Iraq? Uh, when we invaded Iraq, it was all based on false information. Israeli intelligence was saying that Saddam Hussein had mass weapons of mass destruction. Uh, we went in there on a false pretense because he had nuclear bombs and yet uh, the CIA clearly had uh, had the evidence that this was not true. They had one agent that said he had uh, 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 tubes, aluminum tubes, that did not meet the criteria for a nuclear weapon uh, type tubes. Uh, missiles, yes, but not the type that they were looking at. There was no yellow cake being shipped from Africa uh, into Iran. That was all fabricated lies. Uh, so how can we really believe that this is the same thing again? And yet alone, what's another thing that's striking to me is that what, you know, how did we get up in the United, as far as Americans, how did we end up in the Middle East wars to begin with? Well, it's 9-11, correct? Well, what was 9-11? What really happened with 9-11? Isn't it interesting how so many things are fabricated in the world in order to justify more wars in other parts of the world? Hmm. You know, we have some interesting information about 9-11 as well. We have not spoke about it as of yet, but we do know, and it's sitting right there in the public eye and nobody pays attention to it. Some people that were actually there at the Twin Towers, yeah, just before they fell. You ever do a little bit of research, you could put the pieces together yourself. I won't go into that can of worms right now because uh, it would shock a lot of people. It doesn't shock me a bit in the world, but it would shock a lot. But anyway, so the S300 system is online. Angela Merkel has certainly come into uh, uh, inside of Israel for the purpose of getting ready for this massive war. After all, her war planes are in Jordan and they are supposed to help take down the system there. Uh, I also know too from intelligence that I've had that's been shared with me on the ground in Israel, that the country of Jordan and Israel would work with work against Iran. Uh, they would go after the targets there, whereas the U.S., uh, France, and Britain will deal with Syria, and they will deal with Russia if Russia gets involved in this, which no doubt Russia probably will, because I don't see how Russia could avoid being hit with all this attack going on in the country there. Could be wrong, though. Russia may stand down, may allow Syria to be totally decimated as a result. We'll just have to see. So Merkel has a place to play, and that is, I think they'll be working with the Israelis on, against the Iranians. It'll be totally unexpected by Iran that Germany joins in against them. Uh, in other news as well, there's another problem, as I've mentioned to you the other day on the news there with Kosovo and Serbia. Kosovo sent in special forces there, uh, right there on the dam, uh, the major water supply for the two countries there. And Serbia, very... Uh, has put their troops on war alert, and now they have reached out to the Kremlin. Uh, the Prime Minister there, uh, Vucici, uh, plans to appeal to Russia over Kosovo. They're wanting Russia's backing and help to deal with the situation there. Uh, so he did reach out to him. It says here that according to the media reports, the head of Serbia is Alexander uh, uh, Vucic, I don't know how you pronounce that for sure, will meet with Vladimir Putin on October the 2nd in Moscow. The Serbian president said earlier that he intends to appeal to his Russian counterpart for support. Right there in the heart of the European Union. And the Serbia has been an ally to Russia, even though I think that, I, I, not for sure, but I think Serbia is a NATO member. But they're actually reaching out to Russia. Uh, Ukraine is still becoming a hotbed spot, and as I said, I can see war fronts all over the place, even in Europe. Ukrainian diaspora called for a repeal of the decree of the transfer of Crimea to the U uh, Ukrainian so uh, Soviet Socialist Republic. That's what the news is over here on uh, RIA uh, Novosti. And uh, as, it looks like Russia is taking yet another step to justify the annexation of Crimea. And this would be where the Russia had originally uh, handed over uh, the authority of Crimea to Ukraine back when it was the Soviet uh, Empire there. So now they're wanting to repeal that so they have yet another legal leg to stand on in, in holding Crimea uh, as part of, the, of Russia as a motherland. Uh, also in Ukraine, Kiev has rejected a proposal to ban the shelling of civilian objects in Donbass. That's not very nice. All the other parties, including Russia and the, uh, the two self-proclaimed republics, uh, Donetsk and uh, Luhansk, have agreed 
that there should not be uh, shelling of uh, civilian areas, but uh, Kiev, the Ukrainian President Poroshenko, doesn't agree with that. It's, you know, civilians are open for target as well. And to think that we always back these type of thugs. I, I don't get it. I don't get what's, what it is with American politicians, why they think that we really need to back all the worst of the worst. But we do. U.S. starts training Turkish troops for joint Syrian patrols. Hmm, sounds like a takeover of the country to me, if you ask me. And I think also this training is also involving bringing more of the Turkish forces inside of Syria. Again, all these things are being done for cover. They're getting ready for a war. They're getting ready to finish off Syria and take out Iran. The New World Order is very much in full swing ahead, and I believe that's exactly what we are seeing. Not a good situation at all, friends. As we widen down this broadcast, let me also share with you, those of you that are planning on coming to the conference in, uh, in uh, Kansas, which is actually Shawnee, Kansas, uh, is actually the name of the place it's going to be at. The website for registration is still in its infancy. We've got a lot of corrections still to make on it, but you can at least go in there, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you can actually go ahead and register and purchase your tickets. They are printable. Uh, from what I uh, know, uh, know that our, our web guy is working on this for us, uh, Jamie, we have uh, special speakers going to be there as well. Myself, my wife, and Dr. Stephen Pigeon will also be speaking at this conference. Uh, Laurel Austin uh, is the coordinator that she has helped uh, uh, put this uh, event together for us. Uh, so uh, it tells you a little bit about the conference on here, uh, how you can, you know, you can actually go in there and, and get your tickets there. I, let me just see. I think it's under the part of reserve. Let me just check on this here. Um, yeah, buy tickets right there. Once you click on the word reserve, you can buy your ticket. And uh, let me just see. We are sorry, but your basket was left too long. It has not expired. Click here to start over. I don't know how that works. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah, you can, you can actually click on here, you can buy the tickets. Uh, there are discounts for more than two people, uh, up to five people. You can still get a discount if you're coming in groups. Uh, that'll be something you can do on there as well. But this is the website. I will put a link uh, below for you. It is conference.israelinewslive.org is the actual uh, website that we've developed for that conference. If you're coming to the Pensacola conference, it is a from 12 noon to 8 p.m. in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, do keep in mind that's on our regular website, Israeli News Live. We still have a few more seats left there. So if you, sorry, wrong, wrong website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Um, you can go over there and. Uh, Basically, all it is, you're coming to the donation part of the, of, the, of the website here, and you would actually be able to make a donation. It's important, though, when you click on Pensacola Conference right there, it, I give all the instructions in here what you need to do to be a part of that conference there. We are limited to only 50 people. We don't have a lot of seats left, uh, but we do have, I think there's maybe 10 or so seats still available, maybe 15, not sure exactly how many. But uh, you would just actually go to the donate button on our website. But on our donate button, when you're doing this one here, when you click on it, the important thing is, is that under the donation, it's going to ask you, uh, once you put in, it's $20 per person. Once you put that in and you click next, and I'll just show you. It'll tell me I'm not allowed to donate to myself. But, uh, but once you click that next button right there, it's going to give you a, a section there See, it tells me I can't do it to myself, but that's all right. Add special instructions. It's right there in the middle. Put on their Pensacola conference. Because people that donate to this work that we do here, a lot of times that's what they donate. is $20 or $10, things like that. And we don't know who's, who's who. Uh, and we've had several. We had about eight people already send uh, $20. So we don't know if they're for the conference or not because they're not. these eight people didn't put in there what it was for. Now I am going to the comment section. Uh, I am going to the comment section on our website, and uh, which I think I just closed the website out to see who may actually be uh, noting in there that they're coming, and I'm comparing that with what donations we're receiving. So if if you can at least make a comment on the comment page, that would be great. But as far as the 
as far as the conference in uh, Kansas, the link conference dot israelinewslive.org is the website i'll also on our own website where we speak about the kansas conference i will go in there and include a link to this website as well where people can start registering for that uh too anyway thank you for watching god bless you and uh it is a very serious time going on in the world today and again don't forget syria has activated the s300 system it's going to be a very short time before we see a massive war break out over there. Uh, or at the least, Israel is going to strike at the system. But the thing is, Israel, I think right now, is looking to drum up support before they do. And this is one reason why Germany is a very key ally for them in this. Uh, and of course, the United States is going to back Israel no matter what. But again, uh, and we see the rhetoric coming out of uh, the special envoy, Ms. Hutchinson there, over Russian missiles that are being developed and the U.S. willing to strike those missiles first. Uh, so we're looking at a lot of preemptive strikes right now, and I think it's very short time before things could get really ugly unless somewhere cool heads prevail. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.